Hello everyone and welcome to another session of Office Hours. My name is Adrian. I am the CEO and founder of Groundhog. Today we are going to be discussing or showing you rather how to create an NPS funnel. NPS is, stands for Net Promoter Score. Net Promoter Score is a method of identifying potentially problematic people on your list and also just getting a sense of general satisfaction uh, about your organization. So I'm going to show you how to create one of those with Groundhog. Um, and that's going to be fun. And we're going to get through to that. As always, this session is being recorded. Uh, you will be able to catch the replay in many places here in the Facebook group where after it's done, it'll still be accessible via the post. Uh, we're also going to be uploading it to YouTube as well as Groundhog Academy. So if you, for any reason, want to go back and rewatch this because you didn't get it all the first time, that's totally fine. Uh, just go ahead and find that replay. All right, let's create an NPS funnel. I am going to be doing this from scratch. I do not have a template ready to go. So we're going to be doing it for the first time uh, together. I kind of have a basic the general idea because it's going to be similar to our, um, it's going to be similar to the way that we collect reviews with Groundhog. If you've ever gone through our ultimate review generator, uh, ultimate review generator funnel in Groundhog Academy, uh, it's going to be very similar to that. So we're going to use that as kind of a basis, uh, but I am going to be doing this from scratch. Uh, so this is going to be fun. All right, I'm going to need to close that though, so I can go ahead and open up a site to actually do this. So to start off, we're obviously going to need to create a funnel and I'm gonna make this full screen so that it looks nicer. I'm gonna add a new funnel. And again, I'm gonna be starting from scratch. So for those of you who don't know and you're seeing NPS, what the heck does NPS mean? NPS stands for Net Promoter Score. We use Net Promoter Score as a way to identify whether our customers are happy with us. Uh, and we, it's also a way to provide a method for people to tell us that they are unhappy uh, so that we can take action on their unhappiness uh, because we don't want them to be unhappy. So we are going to start this funnel off uh, a couple ways. So number one, we're going to start off with a uh, tag applied benchmark because that's easy to do. Uh, I'm going to rename this NPS funnel. You can name it whatever the heck you want. I'm going to just keep it simple. NPS funnel. I'm going to start off with a tag applied benchmark. Obviously, the tag applied benchmark works uh, or gets triggered whenever a tag is applied to a specific contact. Uh, now the tag that I'm going to use is I'm just going to use the marketable tag because guess what? The marketable tag is applied to anyone that is added to your list. Now you may want instead to use a tag where uh, you have some sort of monetary interaction involved. That might look like if you have a customer tag that you apply to people if they purchase something in WooCommerce. Uh, it could also be if they have like a deal completed in the sales pipeline. Uh, there are lots of different ways uh, or lots of different touch points where you may want to activate this net promoter score funnel. Uh, I uh, am simply going to do it based on when they join the list uh, because let's say I have a product that doesn't necessarily require that they give up any money and they just want to be or just want to see how happy they are with the service of the organization, regardless of whether they are a customer or not. So I'm gonna use the marketable tag, which again is automatically applied to anybody uh, when they get that. So I'm gonna say uh, joins or yeah, joins the list. So when someone joins the list, they get this tag or sorry, when they well, when they join those, this tag applied benchmark will be triggered and they will enter into uh, the funnel. I do not need that apply tag thing. So I'm going to get rid of that. So we don't want uh, an email and we're, we are going to be requ requesting their feedback with an email, but we don't want that email to go out right away. We want to allow some time for someone to consume the product, to enjoy the product, to have interactions with support. 
Uh, so we essentially just want to make sure that there's a window of time for someone to actually consume the product after they have uh, join the list or purchased it in the first place. Uh, if you are following or you have implemented our ultimate review generator funnel, which if you haven't, I will include a link to that near the end of the presentation because it's absolutely excellent and that's how we've generated 676 five-star reviews. Uh, so you should have it if you, if you don't. But if you've implemented that, you'll know that we generally wait the refund period to send a review request <laughs> to, to someone. So if you have a 14 day refund period, you send that review request after 14 days. Or if you have a 30 day, you send it after 30 days, which is generally a, enough time for someone to consume a product. The reason we send it after the refund period is because the refund period is supposed to signify enough time to test a product and decide whether you like it or not. Uh, we also send it at the end of the refund period so we don't remind anybody. You know, <laughs> but I digress. So we want to give a fair amount of time for someone to really consume a product and be part of the organization uh, so that they can make an informed decision of whether they're happy or not. So we, all of that to say, we're gonna add a delay timer after that initial benchmark. All of that just for a measly delay timer. But how long is that delay timer supposed to be? Uh, well, we, I am going to set it at one month initially. So one month is what I'm going to set this initial delay timer to. Uh, I'm gonna send, I only want the first email to my, my request for feedback email to go out at a specific time. So let's say I wanna send it up, 9 a.m. actually sounds good. So I'm gonna send out my first email to collect NPS feedback at 9 a.m. And I do have a question. And if at any point you do have a question, I want you to go to the chat because I am monitoring it it takes a path of my big screen here. Uh, so if you do have a question, go ahead and post it in there. I have a question from Dale. And Dale says, uh, review request funnel. Interesting. Yes, Dale. Uh, so if uh, I'll actually just show this now. Academy.groundhog.io. So Dale, if you go to academy.groundhog.io, which I have here, you click on courses. We have a number of free ones all of which you should take because they are all excellent. Uh, the, the one I am referencing is the Ultimate Review Generator Funnel, and it contains a training and a template on how to get you more five-star reviews, exactly as it says here in the little thumbnail. So for anyone who wants to generate more five-star reviews, go take this course. Guess what? It's free, and it's great, and it's actually done by Will Milton, who's now in leadership at Lyft LMS. He's a great guy uh, and a great presenter. William Bean asks, if you create this benchmark and people already have the tag applied from long ago, does it initiate the funnel for them? No, it does not. So when you create a new funnel and you have a benchmark which may or may not apply to people who in the past, it will only apply to people who get that tag or who satisfied the conditions from the point which the funnel was enabled. It will not automatically apply to anyone previously. However, that being said, once you activate the funnel, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and give it a refresh here. Uh, there is a new button called Add Contacts, and you can go ahead and you can actually add all of those people to the funnel after the fact if you want. So hopefully that answers your question, William. Uh, and Dale says, thanks, Adrian. Yes, it's a great course. Go take it. It's awesome. All right, so we're going to wait one month uh, to get some initial feedback from this person uh, or from whoever the person on the list who we want feedback from, we're gonna wait one month and then we're gonna send our initial email. Uh, so we can go to actions, click on send email. Uh, we're gonna have to create a new email. So just click that new create email button. I'm gonna give this a name, uh, NPS survey first email. Uh, if you are looking for naming conventions, you are not going to find that here, unfortunately. Ooh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Someone's plugin that's activated here is conflicting. We're just going to ignore that and pretend that's not there. NPS survey first email. I'm going to just say, we'd love your feedback. I'm then also going to use their first name in the subject line using that first replacement code. There we go. Uh, so NPS survey first email, we'd love your feedback first. 
and then we have the following. Hi first, uh, this is where, this is just demo content, so we're just gonna delete that. It's been a month since you became a Groundhog community member. I think the membership terminology for customers is incredibly powerful. Uh, my dad says everyone has a longing for belonging and he stole that from someone else, so don't quote me on that. <laughs> uh, but everyone's got a longing for belonging and I think members is an excellent terminology to reference people because it makes them feel like they're part of a general community. Uh, so when we reference people like Groundhoggers, you're all community members, you're not just customers. Uh, we are all kind of like in the same boat together and I think that's super important. And that's gonna get you, or uh, the more you use that terminology, the more investment your customers are gonna have in your, the success of your organization, which I think is again is super important. So using that over and over again, and especially in the emails or which came before that precede this one is gonna get you an overall better NPS score, net promoter score, which again is a, an indication of how happy your customers are with your organization. Uh, Michael says, I just finished writing my blog post, my blog post on your great plugin. That's not really a question, but that's great feedback. So your NPS promoter score must be really high. <laughs> So that's great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Michael. Uh, you, you should post a link to that in the Facebook group after after office hours is done. Back to the email writing. It's been a month since I became a Groundhog community member. We'd love your feedback so that we can make better decisions and better products that benefit you. It's important that you can't just go and request feedback. There always has to be something in it for the end user. Um, and for feedback, what's in it for the end user is that they're going to get, hopefully, a better experience. But we have to tell them that the reason we're collecting feedback is so that we can provide them a better experience. So we'd love your feedback, spell your correctly, so that we can make better decisions and better products that benefit you. Uh, you can reword that. Uh, but essentially, it just has to make sure that you're providing a reason for them to actually take time out of their day uh, to submit this feedback. Speaking of time of the day, uh, we can actually tell them what their time commitment is going to be. Leaving feedback will only take two seconds. And I'll show you why it's only going to take two seconds, because we're actually going to embed the survey right in this email. If you joined us for office hours, what feels like a century ago, uh, I actually did an office hours on how to create surveys within emails. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Uh, so leaving feedback only takes two seconds and I'm gonna have to go configure that in a moment. Uh, next, I appreciate your membership and uh, We are grateful to have you in our circle. Thanks in advance, Adrian, your signature. So that's our email. Obviously I'm missing that survey bit, which I'm gonna go configure now. Uh, things to note, thanks in advance is actually a very effective uh, sign off for getting people to do the things that you're asking them to do. I think HubSpot did an actual survey on this. They used their absolute monumental, massive databases uh, of user interactions over decades to put together a report. And thanks in advance is really good at getting people to take action. Who knew? So use that whenever you want people to actually do something, uh, like take action in a survey. So I'm going to exit out of full screen for a moment because what's next is I have to create this email, save it. You don't want to exit without without saving it. That would be problematic. There we go. All of our data is there. Uh, so let's close that. Oh, where did it go? Uh, NPS, there it is. 
epic. Save that. Uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to configure the things that we're going to need to actually put a survey in our email. And we're going to do that using superlinks. Uh, so we are going to create a number of superlinks. And what superlinks do is it is a great feature that allows you to embed a link somewhere and automatically apply a tag so that we can track user interactions and, and whatnot. So super helpful. So add new super link. Uh, we want, um, right. I think the way that I want to do this is we'll just do one through 10. Uh, so I'm going to call this NPS one. Uh, so we're going to rate our NPS score on a scale of one to 10 of how likely they are to recommend us to someone else. Uh, I'll say that again. So we are going to ask the question on a scale of one to 10, how likely are you to recommend us to someone else? And that is going to be the basis of our NPS score. Uh, so the super links that we're going to create are just simply going to be labeled NPS one through NPS 10. Uh, and we are going to select a page to redirect to. I recommend that you set up a, a feedback page because a link needs to take them somewhere. So if you don't have one already, uh, let's go add a new page. Here we go. Uh, and I'm just going to call this feedback. Feedback does not have a capital B. And if you want, you can actually personalize it with this short code to insert replacements into the content, just like that. Thanks for your feedback first. It's going to help us create a better user experience for you. And we'll go ahead and publish that. There's no E there, update, excellent. So now we can use that here. Just like that. Uh, and the tag we are going to add, I'm gonna add those in bulk. So we are going to need to add a number of tags in order to use as super links to create and generate the report later. Uh, so we are just going to do the following, NPS1, NPS2, NPS3, NPS4, NPS5, NPS6, NPS7, NPS8, NPS9, NPS10. Uh, so those are the tags that we're going to have to track, again, people who are certain NPS scores and we're going to add those tags. There we go. All of those tags have been added. And now when we're adding those super links, we are going to add the relevant NPS tag to the relevant super link. So I'll create a couple more. I won't create all of them because that's a lot of work. Goes to feedback. NPS two. We'll do NPS five. And then we'll also do NPS 10. Just like that, add new super link. There we go. So once you've created your super links one through 10, we are now going to be able to go back to our uh, go back. Sorry, go back to our funnel. And then configure the email to contain those links. 
Uh, so edit this email. We're going to insert our question. How can someone, <laughs> how do I spell colleague? There we go, excellent. How likely are you to recommend Groundhog to a friend or colleague? And this is where we are going to put our links to our survey. Uh, so we have very unlikely on one end. And then we have very likely on one end. And we have our survey options in the middle. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just like that. And you can format that and make it look visually interesting or however you want to do that. Uh, but essentially, you just have a scale right here in your email uh, from 1 to 10. And maybe what you want to do is you want to do emoji faces. I don't know. Let's do, let's do a frown and make it interesting. So here we go. Maybe instead of very unlikely, you want to do a sad face or thumbs down. Maybe I, that's that's more that's more accurate. I think thumbs down or thumbs up. So let's grab a thumbs up here, a Simpsons yellow thumbs up, and we'll go get a thumbs down. And I'm getting these, by the way, from Emojipedia, which is just allows you to copy paste emojis. Just like that. So we have thumbs up, thumbs down, and a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, let's go ahead and center align that. Or instead of center align it, we'll just uh, tab it, maybe. Nope, that doesn't work. Why doesn't that work? Uh, where's my toolbar? Here we go. And increase indent. There we go. That looks good. I am visually happy with that. So now what we need to do is we need to grab our super links. So let's go grab our super links. So we have the source URL. We're going to use the source URL for this pit. It's going to be a little bit easier to use than the replacement code is. So we're going to grab the source URL for MPS1. Copy that. And then in the one, we are just going to insert that link just like that. And then for NPS2, grab the link, just like that. And I'm actually going to just do it so it's just on the number. There we go. Grab the link for five. Grab the link for 10. Boom, there we go. And obviously, you'd want to do it for all of these, uh, these uh, links here, so that it would be, obviously, if they clicked one of those numbers, that they'd get that response. Uh, and then what that's going to do is that's going to send them to the feedback page, and it's going to automatically apply that tag so we can reference that later. I do see a question from Dale, and Dale is saying there is no visual editor or WYSIWYG editor to visually get a feel for what the email will look like before sending or as building. Uh, I mean, if you're using this email editor, Dale, uh, once you update it, uh, you can just preview it, and it shows you exactly what it's going to look like. Is uh, that what you're looking for? Because if that's what you're looking for, then that's 
pretty simple. I mean, for the simple editor, like what you see is really what you get for the plain text one. And for the other one, for the drag and drop email editor, it's also fairly similar to what you're going to get. It's very what much what you see is what you get. So uh, I would hope that this would kind of meet your expectations or, or meet your needs. That being said, the email editor is being redone with Gutenberg uh, and will be available by the end of the first quarter. So that's our first email. So we're going to send that out. And we are then going to rename this send NPS survey. We are then going to add another timer. Because if they don't, uh, if they don't interact with this email, we just want to send it again. Because maybe they didn't read it, maybe they didn't open it, maybe they didn't provide feedback. I'm also going to rename, rename this. Wait one month. Send it. Wait, wait a few days. And we are just going to copy that, and we're just going to send the NPS survey again. Because maybe they didn't interact with the first one. But we want to send it a few times so that we're absolutely sure we get that feedback. And we're going to give up after a few times. So let's go ahead and where is Delay timer. Wait three more days. 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 Let's go ahead and duplicate that. Last time. And once we have those three emails, we've waited one month and then we've fo followed up with them three times to try and get them to take the survey. Uh, we're going to give up and we're not going to send them any more emails. But we are going to make sure that they don't receive all three of those emails because that would be annoying even if they provided feedback the first time. So going back to our benchmarks, we are going to use the tag applied benchmark here. And in this benchmark, uh, we are going to configure uh, to stop the funnel once they've answered the NPS survey. So once they've answered the NPS survey, we are going to no longer communicate with this person uh, about the NPS survey. And the way we do that is by just adding our NPS tags here. NPS 7, NPS 8, NPS 9, NPS 10. So when any of these tags are applied, meaning that they answered the survey, uh, then we are going to end this funnel, uh, meaning that they, get, they skip any of the remaining steps, uh, and then they get pulled out. And that way, we will get a percentage of the people who entered this funnel and the number of responses that we actually got so that we can configure it uh, and optimize it and everything like that. I do have a question from Dale. Uh, Dale's asking, by the way, do we need to use WP Send with Groundhog? Uh, no, you do not. There are a number of email providers that Groundhog integrates with. Uh, you can use SendGrid, AWS, MailHawk, Elastic Email, any third parties as well. Uh, but there are so many uh, that you can choose from. If you need help choosing one, uh, I do have a document for you. Uh, Dale, you can have a look at this to get a list of recommended senders for Groundhog. It is recommended that you do have an SMTP service, otherwise your emails will probably go to spam. And no one wants that. Emails that go to spam don't help anybody. So you do have a vested interest in sending good email. Generally, that means uh, using a reliable and trusted SMTP service. All right, so are there any questions so far on the NPS survey funnel? 
So what we're doing is we are requesting people to rate on a scale of one to 10, how likely they are to recommend Groundhog to someone else. Uh, and we're using super links to add tags, NPS one through 10 to their profile or to their contact record so that we can reference that later uh, and pull reports of the number of people and get averages and all that fun stuff. We also have uh, the funnel reporting to tell us the amount of people that enter this funnel and then actually provide a response, which is really, really, really exciting. And you can also add people manually to this funnel uh, using the add contact. So once you're ready, go ahead and activate this funnel and now it's going to kick off and anyone who then joins the list is going to get enter this funnel uh, and be requested to answer this NPS survey. Why is this good? Well, if people are consistently rating you poorly, like NPS one through six, which is not great, uh, then you should do something about it. And we can uh, do triage and we can reach out to those customers later and try and make amends. If people are uh, giving you a great score, uh, then they might wanna get different marketing materials than you would normally send to your list uh, to get them to re uh to get them to re-engage with you maybe submit a review or do something else uh dale is asking with the nps survey do you use this multiple times over the lifetime relation of the client you absolutely can uh so if you want to do that uh let's say uh let so okay i see a couple questions i see one from jason jason i'll answer your question in a sec Dale, uh, in order to send this throughout multiple years, I saw Chris do one where he sent one out every single year and it is possible to do that. So if I want to configure this to send out every year, uh, let's change this first one to becomes a customer. And I'm gonna change this to a customer tag. Uh, this could be, again, buys a product from WooCommerce, becomes a customer, or whoever, or whenever the interaction happens that you want to start the NPS survey is what's going to go with this first one. I'm going to add another benchmark here uh, to uh, another type applied one. I'm gonna call this one restart NPS survey. Uh, and I am going to do this, actually, delete. I want a tag removed one. Restart NPS survey. So Dale, this is what happens if you wanna redo this or recycle this funnel every single year. Uh, so restart NPS survey when any of these tags are removed. So NPS one, NPS two, NPS three, NPS four, NPS five, NPS six, NPS seven, eight, nine. I'm thinking we might need a more efficient way to do this. Maybe that's another product in the future. All right, so when any of these tags are removed, we are going to restart this funnel. And at the end of this funnel, what we are going to do is the following. So after they've answered the NPS survey for that first time, we are going to add a new tag, or sorry, a new delay timer. And we're gonna wait one year, so 12 months. We're gonna wait 12 months, which is one year. And then after that one year, we are going to remove their NPS tag. <laughs> uh, NPS, NPS, NPS. I will give you the funnel template so you don't have to do all of this yourself because that would be quite annoying. All right, so after that first year, we are going to remove all of those tags. 
okay? And what that's gonna do is when those tags are removed, it's going to restart the funnel, and then we are going to essentially redo that whole NPS thing uh, so that we can maintain the, the, the NPS score of a certain customer over the lifetime of that customer every single year. Uh, you can do it every six months if you want, if you want, and uh, you can just change this to six months instead of 12. But what this is gonna do is just this is going to restart the funnel every essentially every 12 months. Remove NPS score so that it will redo and then restart the NPS survey, resend the email, stop sending emails when they answer the survey and then do the same thing all over again. Uh, and this is essentially a funnel which restarts itself over time, which is pretty awesome and I think pretty cool. Um, and that was exactly how you do that, Dale. So thank you for asking, that's an excellent question. Do we have any other questions regarding the NPS survey? I see one from Jason. Jason asks, would be nice to see what the reports would look like even if you have that kind of, that kind of hand wave through data. Uh, yeah, sure. So let me uh, show you what that would look like, Jason, kind of. Uh, I can only put one person through this, though, so that's going to be kind of difficult, but I'll do my best. So let's uh, add a new contact. I'm gonna add a tag, I'm gonna add that customer tag. Add that contact. I'm then going to go to their activity tab. I'm gonna process events because the cron probably doesn't, isn't set up on this particular site. Great, and now they are set up for that one month. So if I go back to my funnel here, Jason, and I click on the report, I should see some initial kind of like stats. So I have that one person entered this funnel to become a customer. I would then also get uh, the benchmark for the restart, how many people have restarted it, and then how many people have answered. Uh, so I'd get that conversion rate. Currently the conversion rate is zero uh, because no one's answered the survey. Um, and then you'd also be able to see which emails and which links people are clicking and all that stuff so you could see the general results. Uh, in order to actually get the results for uh, which people filled out or which tags people filled out for which one in their answers, we're gonna have to do our, a little search here uh, to actually get those numbers. So include contacts with NPS1 is essentially our search. And then we'd be able to see, all right, there's however many of these contacts with NPS1. What's really probably the better use of this net promoter score is we want to be able to set up funnels uh, or set up responses or system processes to handle people who have negative scores. So I might want to set up another funnel called handle negative NPS. And that would be triggered when someone gives a negative NPS score. And let's say they had a negative NPS score of one through six, NPS one, NPS two through NPS six. We're gonna consider a negative. And we wanna send an email to this person that's like, what can we do better? So that would be the value of being able to track how people are responding to your products or, or what your net promoter score is. Uh, if someone gives you a negative score, you can set up another funnel to handle that, send them whatever, have them book calls with support or do triage or whatever system processes you have installed. That's the value of having this information. Uh, you can also go through your list and find everyone and do just do a search for, I want everyone with an NPS score from one through six. Uh, and then you can try and maybe create a special product for those people or just basically get them over the edge. And then after you've done that, resend them that NPS form so you can try and see if you've done better the second time around. 
hopefully that answers your question, Jason. But uh, so that was kind of what the reporting round to get those people to actually see what people are answering. You have to go to the search and actually search for that. Uh, you probably set up a report for it as well. Uh, you'd have to do that custom now. Uh, I'm actually thinking that this is probably a product that we'll just have to create an NPS add-on maybe. We'll see. Okay, William Beam is asking, when do you expect to deliver the updated interface for building a funnel? I'm curious how these will look when that happens. Uh, again, that's the end of the first quarter, William. Uh, that is currently what you can expect is the updated email editor, updated reporting area, updated funnel editing area is the end of the first quarter. Okay, do I have any other questions uh, regarding the NPS score? I really love this kind of stuff and getting feedback, it helps Groundhog make better products. So if you have feedback for me now, uh, or maybe if you just wanna, you know, between a number one and 10, how likely are you to recommend Groundhog to a colleague? You can just drop that in the chat area right now and give me some direct feedback. <laughs> I, I, I kid though. Uh, any actual feedback questions or you want to know something specifically how the funnel editor or sorry, not how the funnel editor, but how the NPS funnel survey works, how you set it up. Uh, obviously, I'm going to send everybody, uh, I want to send everybody a link to actually go ahead and install this on for your own. Jesse says 10. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> William also says 10. Thank you, William. I know it's, you can't, you, no, no one can say below a 10 right now because you know it's public, <laughs> but I appreciate it anyway. Uh, link in the chat to download the template for this NPS funnel with the emails written, with the tags already created so you don't have to do any extra work. Uh, the only thing you'll have to do is create the feedback page and the super links themselves and then add those to the email. Uh, obviously that won't be done automatically for you. Uh, it should be though. We're gonna have to fill, another feature we're gonna have to build in the future, uh, but those are what you're gonna have to set up in the meantime. But this is a really effective way of determining customer happiness. Um, and you can use this to trigger a lot of other communications within your organization, within Groundhog, so that you can help your customers better. All right, we are going to move on because we only have eight minutes left because I took, I started a little bit late and I took a long time going through that NPS funnel. Uh, we are going to do open Q&A at this point. So this would be for any questions uh, related to Groundhog, related to specific features, related to email marketing. Uh, everything is essentially up for grabs at this point. If you got a question, uh, this is where we're going to get you an answer. Alrighty, we have a question from uh, William. Uh, he says, I like it, nice way of doing a survey without hoping someone will click a link to get to the survey. Uh, yeah, so the, the unique thing about this kind of email versus uh, sending someone to like a form to fill something out is that this is one step while a form is multiple steps. It's two steps or usually three because they have to click to the link to the email then they have to select an option and then they have to click that submit button. Uh, this just requires that someone clicks link in an email, one step goes to the feedback page, right? So it's a one step process instead of a three step process, which makes it really, really, really effective. Uh, so exactly, uh, although I don't, William pointed that out. So, but just explaining why it's more effective to put it in an email versus in a form. Uh, Harry asks, coming from another email service provider, I understand you handle the lists via tags is what I think you meant to say. Uh, yeah, so there's no kind of lists feature in Groundhog. We find that the lists, or I mean, most email providers kind of like don't really use lists. I, I come from an Infusionsoft background and there was no lists, so my product doesn't have any lists. Uh, but let me see the best way that I can explain it. So in the contact area, there, it's kind of like one big list and then you segment that list with tags uh, and you can use uh, groups of tags or groups of different uh, criteria, segmentation criteria to create different lists. Uh, so let's say I wanted to create a group of people that I could easily reference. I want anyone who is a customer 
So who is the tag customer and has confirmed their opt-in status. So their opt-in status is confirmed. Uh, if I go ahead and do that and I click search, it's gonna give me a list of those people. Uh, currently there's no one that matches that criteria because there's no one uh, on this particular list. Uh, but what I can do is I can go ahead and save that search. So I can save that as confirmed contacts and then save that search. And now what I can do is I can go to the Save Searches dropdown, and then whenever I want to easily view uh, that segment, so anyone who has their contacts, their 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 tags as customer, and their opt-in status is confirmed, I can come here, click on that, click on Load Search, and it's just going to immediately give me that list of people. Uh, when you're sending broadcast emails, you can also reference the Save Searches to easily uh, reference groups of contacts within your kind of like big groundhog list. So you can select easily by tags or use a saved search. Uh, so I can use that confirmed contacts to then send that email. Hopefully that makes sense, Harry. There's no lists, it's just tags, but then you can use those saved searches to easily reference uh, those segments over time. So thank you for asking and I hope that answers your question. Harry says, I think I got it, which means success. So awesome, Harry. All right, we are at the top of the hour. We got three minutes till the end, so I am going to start wrapping up. If you did not get to answer your question, don't worry. Uh, or sorry, if we did, you did not get to ask your question and we didn't have time to answer it, don't worry. There are other ways. If you have or need for additional resources or you want to learn more about Groundhog, there's lots of opportunities for you to learn more. Uh, we have academy.groundhog.io. There's literally so many free courses there. Just go take them. They're awesome. Uh, they're fun. They're really short. Most of them are no longer than an hour. They're cut up into videos really, really easily. Uh, this pro will probably end up in a course at some point, which is awesome. Uh, the re Ultimate Review Generator Funnel. Go get that funnel and install it immediately. It's the fastest way to start generating more five-star reviews right away. If you need uh, help getting Groundhog started, you want to work with someone, you want to uh, sit back and relax and let someone else do the heavy lifting and the hard work, that's what our certified partners are for. Uh, so you can go to our certified partner directory and get set up with a certified partner. Uh, and what they're going to do is they're going to help you implement Groundhog and do your everything that you want. And if you don't know what you need, guess what? They know what you need. Uh, and they will set up all of the standard Groundhog funnels that are immediately going to help you get more reviews, get more clients, and close more deals. And if you need help, or sorry, I did that wrong. If you know someone, a colleague, uh, and if you rated Groundhog a 10 in terms of would you recommend Groundhog to a client uh, or a colleague or just someone you know, you will actually get rewarded for recommending Groundhog to other people. You can go to affiliate area for slash registration to register your affiliate account and earn recurring commissions uh, on every single person you refer to us. If you're not following us on social media, you need to start. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, uh, all currently uh, awesome social media platforms that we're on and constantly participating. So if you wanna be part of the Groundhog conversation outside of just the Facebook group, go follow us on all these social media platforms. If you have yet to leave a review, and you, again, you left a 10 uh, or an NPS score of 10 for us, go to our wordpress.org repository page and leave one of those awesome five-star reviews, and that would really help us out. If you have additional questions and we weren't able to answer your question on this call, uh, you can continue to comment. We're monitoring. You can post in the Facebook group. That's what it's there for. You can message us on live chat. You can add us on Twitter. You can email us. You can submit a support ticket. You can message us on the live chat. Literally so many options for you to get answers to your burning questions. So thank you for spending the last 55 minutes with me. Uh, I really appreciate it. I know it's asking a lot for you as business owners to take time here today. So I want you to know it doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you for participating. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening. I will see everyone next week, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for another session of Office Hours. Thanks and have a great day.